Welcome, stranger. Been a week or two. Normally on this channel I make uh, videos about um, manual SLRs, uh, classic, that are made back in the 70s. And uh, recently a customer sent me a uh, rangefinder, a Minolta Hymatic 7S. They made different models. Anyway, and I thought uh, it was made in the 60s. I thought that uh, it might be worth making a uh, video about and that uh, some of you might have an interest in that sort of thing. So let's get started. Okay, let's switch cameras. Try this one here. There we go. A lot of car noise outside today. Here's a closer view of the camera. There on the top, Hymatic S. A relic. Part of his time. There's the uh, rewind knob, the um, hot shoe. It had a uh, PC plug here on the side. Flashes that time, some had uh, needed a PC plug, some would work on a hot shoe, some would work on both. So cameras came with both that time. Later they uh, eliminated the uh, PC plug. Release right here, advance, and uh, film counter. And this camera had something that um, cameras had back at that time, which were handy, but some cameras didn't because it uh, required extra trouble to make them. This little window here, and it says film. There was a little red rectangle here that would appear in this window if you had film in your camera. And uh, that was very handy. And for somebody today would say, well, why was that handy? Well, it wasn't like your um, smart cameras where you could take um, 100 or 1,000 pictures. If you, um, you had 24 pictures, so you had to kind of space them out and make them special. So let's say you shot uh, 12 uh, really nice pictures at the beach with your friends. And uh, you set the camera aside when you got home, and two or three weeks later you said, Oh, a birthday party's coming up, and uh, I need to put film in my camera. So you would um, open the back here and look in there, and there's your uh, beach pictures, 12 of them, and you've ruined them because you've exposed them to the light. And so what this little window here would do is it, um, if you saw that red square, you'd know there's still film in it. And you look up here at the top, and there would be the counter, 12 pictures, and you would remember then and say, oh, yeah, I took beach pictures. The camera doesn't need film at this time. I need to leave the back closed. I'll just take the extra film with me at the birthday party. I'll, uh, when this one gets up to uh, 24 or whatever, you know, roll you bought, they had 12, 24, and 36 normally. And um, when it got uh, reached 24, you would then rewind it here and uh, put in your second box of film. So that's what that was window was for, and like I said, not all cameras have them. I have ruined pictures. I have, uh, back at that time, and I was around then, would um, take pictures and forget that I had film in my camera and open it up. The, um, on the base here, this is a, uh, the battery holder. It's a, um, held a uh, 1.35 mercury battery. The, um, later changed that to an alkaline 1.5, which uh, will work just fine. There is a little, maybe a half a stop difference between the two, but uh, nothing serious. The uh, photo finisher can uh, correct the problem. There's also a, uh, an adjustment right about here on the meter. And I can adjust a uh, camera to uh, take a 1.5. On this particular camera, um, I don't know if I'm going to change it over or not. I'll have to look at the uh, customer's uh, form and see if he requested or not. Anyway, that's um, about it for this particular part. We need to look at the um, lens barrel next. Okay, now we'll... Uh, Look at the barrel. I've got a uh, close-up macro on it. 
which never seems to focus on the automatic properly, so I have to leave it manual quite often. This is AA, stands for automatic, automatic for speeds, and automatic for f-stops. And people who bought this top camera normally would just set it to AA and never touch it again. And these were people who were not really interested in the, um, the hobby of photography, they just wanted to take pictures. Maybe they came from uh, a family that just had a box camera, which was quite common at that time. And this was their first um, expensive camera. And um, they might not even know what uh, speeds and uh, f-stops are. So a lot of people just set them on AA and uh, uh, that's all they used. Like the uh, people, uh, I say people, the uh, young men that were in the army during the Vietnam War that bought this top camera, the families they came from um, may have just had box cameras and they didn't know anything about these cameras. These were the iPhones at the time. They were new and they had a lot of features and people just uh, wanted, they just wanted to take pictures. And uh, they weren't interested in all that. Down here are the, um, is the focus. As you can see, I'm moving the barrel in and out here. Looks like it goes from 0 0.9 to infinity. These cameras used uh, parallax for focusing. Image came in here, and this was your main window, and it was superimposed on top of each other. And you overlap them. Once you got them lined up where they were both overlapped, you were in focus. And um, it was a good system. It was the system most cameras used before they started using SLRs. It worked for a while at the time. And let's see, it also had a, a manual override, which was clunky because this camera really wasn't made to be used that way. If you were at a, a car race uh, or uh, sports, you used 500th of a second. You set the camera for that and then you changed your aperture to get the right exposure. But on the other hand, if you were in a low light situation, let's say a room at a birthday party and there wasn't much light, just ambient light, you would set it at 1.8 and then you would change your speeds to set your exposure. You had to prioritize for one or the other. Um, the way that was done, like I said, this camera is kind of clunky, is you look through this window and there was an EV scale on the right hand side. It went from 5.7 to 17. And the needle would point at a number. Let's say that number was 14. This EV window here, you would have to have 14 in there visible and then your exposure would be right. There's nothing in there now because the camera is in the AA position, automatic. But as soon as you take it off automatic, numbers, EV numbers start appearing in there. So what you would do is it, let's say that you're uh, taking pictures of a car races, you would set it at um, 500 speed on the camera. Uh, you would move that over here, 500. And then you would turn this uh, aperture until you got 14 in here, EV 14. Like I said, it was kind of a clunky system. You would, uh, let's say you were at the race, or I was at the race back then, which I was actually at races. And uh, I'd set the camera at 500 and I'd move it over here. And then uh, I would look through here at the cars running by. And uh, let's say it was at EV 16. Then I would hurriedly move the uh, f-stops to put f-16 in here and then I was ready to take my picture it was that simple uh, but most people just used automatic because automatic usually took uh, fine pictures okay I think I've covered everything self timers right there um, the lens it's um, 1.8 45 millimeter I don't understand these <laughs> names. Rokor, PF. There's your uh, photo cell, which controls the uh, meter there in the front. That's uh, 
One reason, the uh, you put the lens cap on, you turn the meter off because you block the light from the photocell. You take the lens cap off, the light starts hitting the photocell, and then you're using your battery. So that's the way, I don't know if I explained it earlier in this video, you turned your camera on and off is by using the lens cap on this camera. And that uh, there is an off button, if you want to call it here, a switch right here where it says off. And uh, if you were putting the camera away for the end of the day, you wanted it uh, in this position. This is your ASA scale. You notice that nothing has been selected. So in the, when I got to the race course, I would set my it's not very accurate. I would set this uh, switch here to 100 ASA. I normally used 100 ASA film. And then I would take all my pictures, and then at the end of the day when I got home, I would push that back to off. But during the race, let's say I went to get a drink or something, and I wasn't using the camera, I'd put the lens cap on and turn the meter off. And that's how this one worked. Seems strange, but at the time it seemed perfectly normal. This uh, camera is, uh, I know, to young people who weren't uh, born in this age, it looks clunky or camera or crummy, but um, at that time this was cutting edge. The cameras that uh, came before this were much, much worse. Many of them didn't even have meters or self-timers. Some didn't even focus. And you would say, well, how did they, ex you know, the exposure? Well, you got a sheet of paper with your film. And uh, on the film, it would have pictures of like daylight, overcast, uh, sunset, sunrise. And it would give you the settings to set your speeds and f-stops at. So you just glance at the sky and say, well, it's overcast. Okay, the uh, sheet here I've got on the film says that I'm supposed to be set at um, F16 at, um, say, um, F16 at uh, 60th of a second. So then you would change it and set it for um, F16 at a 60th of a second, just off that sheet of paper. And the pictures were fine. You know, the uh, people that uh, developed the, um, the prints, they uh, could compensate if the exposure was off a stop or, you know, it's... Uh, so this camera having a meter in it and cameras that time having a meter in it to us boy that was that was something that was ai baby <laughs> oh well i guess i'm getting too excited here uh that's pretty much it on this camera uh this uh, customer sent this camera in Let's switch here the customer sent this camera in because uh, the needle the EV needle was, it was still moving, but it's not moving much. It's just kind of going up and down one, one EV number. And he wanted me to uh, get it going again. This camera is over 50 years old. And so, um, you know, the, it's been around a while. So yeah, something could go wrong with it. Anyway, let's uh, go inside it and uh, see what the problem is. And I'll show you before I close it up. All right. Let's move on.